All right, thanks for joining us, everyone. Um, again, we are the Academic Resource Center, and this is our bi-weekly academic success webinar series. Um, I am Ashley Bray. I'm the Disability and Learning Skills Specialist at the School of Continuing Studies, and I am here with my colleague, Annie Balot, um, and I'll let her introduce herself. Hi, everyone. I'm Annie Balot. I'm the Learning Skills Specialist on Maine campus. And just a reminder, the Academic Resource Center uh, provides disability support through academic accommodations to students, um, as well as academic resources. Um, and we'll go through some of the stuff on our website. Um, and also, we can meet. Now, this is the only one I've ever seen with that. Yeah. What should we call it? A, instead of the uh, buttons for the Perfect. <laughs> I think a couple of people joined us. Um, can you just minimize I'm gonna mute people while we keep going, but I think I give everyone a couple of minutes. It looks like someone is setting up. Um, so again, I'm Ashley Bray. I um, am the Disability and Learning Skills Advisor for the School of Continuing Studies. I'm here with my colleague, Annie Balat, and she's the Learning Skills Specialist um, here on Maine campus. Um, so in addition to this webinar series, we provide um, academic support to students um, through individual consultations. We'll also highlight some of the resources on our website, um, and we do disability academic accommodations as well. Okay, um, just uh, to keep up to date with everything that we have going on, you can follow us on Facebook um, and Instagram. These are our social media handles below. For Facebook, it's ARC Georgetown. At Instagram, it's at ARC under slash Georgetown. Um, we do a thing called Free App Friday where we post free apps, so very in tune with what we're talking about today. And this is where we'll post ongoing events, webinar series, um, and how to save Oh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm on a oh, it's OK. So before we get started, oh, no, I think some people are having problems with hearing. So you guys can either join. I think some people are having problems with audio. Um, Annie's going to type it out in the chat box. You can either join by um, phone um, or you can join via computer. There should be a chat box um, that pops up right when you start. And we'll give people a minute. Um, so bear with us. Here's some, I'm going to see it. Um, Annie will type in here. I can type it. They should all be able to get in. Okay. All right. So I think we, um, are going to drop down. Yeah, so we're going to keep going. Um, but we wanted to go ahead and um, talk about the past academic success webinar series um, from fall. So this is our website, um, and we record all of our webinars um, and post them here on our website. Um, so as you can see, we have lots of great topics from time management to note taking and research. Um, from the fall semester, um, and then we also post usually the day after um, all of the recorded webinars um, that we're doing for the spring semester. So if you can't um, manage to join us live and in person, um, you can always catch them um, via YouTube on our website. All right, and looking ahead, so here is a full schedule for the spring semester. So we've already done a webinar on navigating campus resources, and like Ashley mentioned, that is archived on our website um, under our YouTube channel. So you can certainly go and watch that webinar about great resources across campus. Right now, um, we're going to do the Get to Know the Helpful Apps webinar, and as you can see moving forward, we have a classroom engagement in the next two weeks. 
um, a writing lab webinar, webinar regarding citation. Um, we have a public speaking webinar at the end of March. We're going to talk about tips for group work and how to navigate those types of conversations. And then, of course, we're going to end the semester with a great finals prep webinar. And just a reminder, all of our webinars can be found on the same Zoom link you guys use to connect today. Um, and this semester, they all are at noon. Great. So to start this new webinar, we're going to going to talk about getting to know some helpful apps and Ashley and I have come up with um, some great apps depending you know specific to academic skills we have some time management apps some organization apps that we'll definitely dive into um, so first let's talk about what what is the purpose of apps why would we want to use apps in our studies and managing our time well simply it helps students manage a full academic and social schedule on the go so we're always have our phones with us computers with us it's a great way to input all of your important dates, deadlines, your social commitments, your personal academic commitments, all in one place to make sure that you're staying on track and you're being really effective with your time. Um, again, it's another great tool to facilitate and implement our go-to organizational and time management strategies, which Ashley and I talk about a lot. So we really have a lot of good apps that we're gonna introduce on how to really manage your time wisely, how to input you know, tasks on a daily basis, how to keep track of everything you have going on as students, um, and how to really make sure that you are um, being successful. And of course, app learning is not time bound, so you can actually access it 24 seven. You can access it anytime, anywhere. So it's not just you have to use it in the classroom. You can access your Google Calendar outside of the classroom. You can access Quizlet and a few different study strategy or um, study uh, test taking apps outside of the classroom to really make sure that you are being effective with your time, using your time wisely, um, and really preparing for those upcoming test quizzes and assignments. And another thing I like about apps um, is that something a lot of times like we can't just do with a to-do list or a paper calendar is that the app can access you. So you can really customize them, set reminders for yourself. Um, and so it takes a little work up off on the front end, but it really makes things seamless. So you can really go into the semester a little with a little less stress um, and hopefully a little bit more organization. And I think when we talk about apps, too, we talk about trial and error, right? Mm -hmm. So some of the apps that we talk about you might have tried before, give it a try, see if it works for you, but some may not work for everybody. So it's really figuring out which apps um, you really kind of connect with and can use on a consistent basis. And so um, to kind of whistle along that point of making sure you guys are finding apps that work best for you and your time, you know, your time management strategies and your style of learning, um, we've kind of broken them into a couple of different categories and we're going to highlight some of our favorites that we've gotten feedback from students that have worked really well and then we're going to go into a demonstration of three different apps um, that we really like to use both in our professional and personal lives um, just to give you an idea of what they can do and how you can kind of incorporate those learning strategies into your own um, work. So our first category is time management apps. Um, I love talking about time management because I think it's really the foundation for all of our academic strategies. I think if you're able to get a good schedule, understand kind of some organizational patterns, how you're spending your time during the day, other things will kind of easily fall into place. So the first one that um, I really love is called 30 for 30. Um, and it's really a basic app. You can download it on your computer, your iPhone, Android, iPad, whatever. Um, and it's basically just a to-do list. It's a task list, but you attach a time to each of the tasks. Um, and then even with the, you can color code them by um, category type. Um, you can also um, add in breaks there, which is great. And we'll talk a little bit about the importance of breaks um, when we get to another section. Um, but I like it because it's really simple. You can take it with you. It has an alarm on it. It will say time's up, time to move on to another task, which is great for helping focus um, and staying on on track. So um, 30 for 30 is great, um, and that's one of my personal favorites. And along those lines, Ashley and I really recommend that students sit down and try and study or read for a good, what, what do we say, 45, 15 minutes with a 10 to 15 minute break. Yep. So really chunking out your time, and this is a great app to make sure that you are really kind of sticking by that rule. You're actually going to be more effective during a 45, 50 minute 
time period rather than a four hour break or a four hour time period where you're not really being effective with your time, you're not retaining any information and you're not implementing breaks. And it's a great one for, I think, um, as Annie highlighted, we say about 45 to 50 minutes, you should be reading really intense studying and then moving to the break. Um, but the general rule is for every one hour of class time, it should be about like two hours of studying. Um, so taking those 45 to 50 minute breaks out of those two hours, breaking them up, and this is a great way to help you manage those so it doesn't feel like you're just sitting down for two hours. You're able to really focus and concentrate and get some breaks in as well. Wonderful. So the next app that we're going to highlight is called To Do It. So it's a way to keep track of everything in one place. So you can organize, prioritize your tasks, enter everything that you have for this upcoming week, for the upcoming entire semester would be a great idea. It's a way to keep track of everything in one place so that we don't have due dates in one notebook or in our calendar or on a post-it note in our bedroom that's lost under a bunch of clothes, right? So it's making sure we have everything in one place um, so that we can easily access it. It's really important, we definitely stress getting information from your head onto a piece of paper or onto an app just like this. So there's a lot that you have to remember. Um, definitely making sure to get the task out of your head and onto your to-do list is a really, really important thing that we recommend. Um, this is another way that you can remember deadlines, upcoming project assignments, and figure out when am I gonna actually complete the work to meet that deadline. And this is a really great way that you can con continue to check off tasks as you get things done. Great. Um, and so our last stop is time out. And this one we really like because we talk a lot about, you know, breaks and it kind of seems counterintuitive sometimes. Uh, you know, you want to be putting in as much study time as you can, but for a lot of individuals, you'll lose focus if you just spend too much time Studying. And our brain really needs breaks. Um, and we're not saying take a break every 10 to 15 minutes, and it doesn't need to be an hour-long Netflix binge of a break. But 10 to 15 minute breaks really cognitively help you reset your mind um, and re-engage and refocus on the material. Um, and Timeout is just a great app that helps you take breaks. You can set it up, um, and that way you're feeling a little bit more refreshed and not getting frustrated with the material in front of you. Yeah, and the nice thing about this app is there's actually two types of breaks that you can set. So a normal break is typically for 10 minutes um, every hour. So you can set it before you even begin working. It'll remind you when that 10 minute break is coming up. So you can reset, refocus, maybe go get a snack, maybe take a walk, maybe listen to some music, anything that really helps you um, kind of take a step back and relax after just a you know intense amount of studying. The second break is called a micro break. So this is just a very brief pause for about 15 seconds every 15 minutes. So this is actually a reminder for students to not tense up as they're reading or as they're studying. So it's something that kind of lets you, it's a quick, quick break to help, let you, your body kind of unclench and kind of relax while you are, you know, really focused during that time period. So again, some more time management apps, these with a little bit of a different um, spin on them. Um, two that we really love, one is self-control. So it helps you avoid distracting websites. Um, I love this, uh, recommending this for students during like finals or if they have a big research paper. Um, I know so often in my work, I'll be working and then I'm like, I'm just gonna check Twitter or I'm just gonna go on Amazon for five minutes. Well, it's never just five minutes. You, it turns into an hour and you're like, what happened? Where did all my time go? This is so great when you really need to, it's crunch time and you really need to, you know, buckle down and focus on what you're doing. Um, Self-control just locks access to websites or mail servers. We use it a lot um, when we need to have a work day and not getting distracted by our email. Um, so it's a great way to really just kind of have that extra layer of support to make sure that you're staying focused. And unfortunately, if you try and break your computer, turn off your phone, it doesn't allow you to actually access those websites because there's already a predetermined length of time that those websites are gonna be blocked. So it's a really, like Ashley said, an extra layer of, okay, I'm gonna make sure that my environment is as distraction reduced as possible, and this is a really good foolproof way to do so. Yeah, and the other one, we talk a lot about with time management, as we've talked today, about 
Um, in order to organize and schedule your, your time, you need to know how you're spending it first. So when I'm meeting with students a lot, or when Annie's meeting with students a lot, we talk a lot about like, can you just track your time in a normal day of how you're spending that time? Where's your time going? Um, and that kind of gives you some indication of um, how much time you have to work on schoolwork or how much time it really takes to travel on Metro these days. Or, you know, I'm always like, it only takes me 20 minutes to get ready, but when I actually look at it, it takes me 45 minutes to get ready. So a lot of times we just underestimate the amount of time it takes to do something. And rescue time is a great um, tool for that. And it helps you really determine your procrastination patterns. Um, so it's basically like a personal analytic service to help you understand your daily habits. So maybe you are just wanting to start implementing some time management strategies for the semester. Maybe it's something new that you haven't done before. Rescue time might be a great app to start with because it can kind of help you pinpoint how much time you spend on your daily habits. And from there, we can kind of talk about scheduling and what works and what doesn't. And isn't there a feature on Rescue Time that you can download it on your computer and it actually tracks what websites you yeah. go to? So if you are known to, like Ashley said, to check Twitter pretty regularly, you can actually see kind of the pattern of that behavior and really narrow down and say, okay, this is something that I need to work on and maybe cut out. And that's where maybe that self-control app comes into play. So this is a really good way to kind of track where this procrastination um, kind of slip up come into play and then using that self-control to really take away that that distraction yeah. okay so our next two um, are about staying organized and I'm sure that you guys have might have heard some of these before these are two that we use on a pretty regularly basis in our office um, Google Drive and Dropbox and really it's just a cloud share where you're able to create folders um, stay organized. You can, with Google Drive, I love it. Annie and I use it a lot when we're working on prep for these webinars. We are in two different office locations, so we can both pull up a um, folder and start working on a PowerPoint or a document together and then save it and always access it. The thing that I love most about Google Drive and Dropbox is their apps um, that you use on your iPhone or Android are very simple to use. Um, and you can color code them and organize them and whatever structure makes sense for you, but they're always on the go. So if you are you know, stuck on a metro train or um, have some downtime in between your commute and are sitting outside of the park and want to just review some notes, if you keep all your notes um, or your assignments in Dropbox or Google Drive, you can literally access them anywhere. Yep, these are great ones. All right, so we're going to move on to some note-taking apps. So the Cornell Note template is a way to use Cornell note-taking system, which we're actually going to show um, in a few minutes, right? We're going to show an example of the Cornell note-taking system. But this is a way, if you're familiar with that note-taking system, you can use this app to directly take notes in that format. Great. And Notability is just a great um, app that combines kind of, you can handwrite the notes. So if you have like a stylus pen on a, your iPad or computer, you can handwrite them in or type them in. You can also audio record. Um, maybe there's an analysis that you need to do for a paper. And while you're reviewing your notes, you think of a great point for that paper. You can, you know, type, push the microphone button, record your thought, and then go back to it and access it later. Um, so it's just kind of a multi-level way of taking notes and really matches learning styles that work best for students. Yeah, to piggyback off of what Ashley just said, definitely thinking about your learning styles. And personally, I'm a visual learner, right? So as I would be in a classroom, I would need to incorporate some sort of visual or diagram or picture to really correlate with the words that I was writing down in class. So this is a great way to combine, like Ashley mentioned, handwriting, if I'm typing up notes, but to really incorporate a photo as well to correlate with the information so that I remember that information more later on because I'm a visual learner. Yeah, and if you are an auditory learner um, like myself, then you can record your notes and listen them back as you're commuting or in between classes. And so for a lot of students, listening to their notes, listening to books that way is very helpful. Um, but Annie, if you are a visual learner, then you will enjoy the next two apps. Oh, I love these. So these are um, mind mapping. 
So essentially, mind mapping is can be a way of taking notes, organizing thoughts. It's just a really clear way to show complex information and re, uh, relationships. And like I said, it is amazing for visual learners. Um, mind 42 and Coggle are both great. It just depends on formatting and what you works best with your technology level of skills. Um, but I love mind mapping when you get stuck on something or you really need to like um, get a flow of how a project's gonna look out or how relationships are working and interconnecting um, to write that paper. Um, mind mapping is a great tool for that. And I'll show you two examples of just some very simple mind mapping a little bit later um, in our webinar. Yeah, I think mind mapping is also great, like you mentioned, just for simple brainstorming. If you're really not sure how to get started on a project or a paper, or you're really trying to understand a concept a little bit more, and just writing it in word form on your piece of paper on your computer just isn't sticking with you, this is a great visual way to really understand the information in a different representation. Yeah. All right, and um, last two before we get into more of like the interactive part of our webinar is self-testing app. So one that I really love is Duolingo, and it's just a learning language platform, and it just has many lessons to help improve your language learning. So if you're learning a new language, whether it's English, Russian, uh, Spanish, French, Chinese, um, I'm trying to remember all that we offer here, <laughs> um, but it's a great way, and it's just like little quizzes, interactive games, little challenges, I think you get points in it. It's super simple, um, but a good way just to kind of keep that mind fresh and keep that language and vocab fresh in your mind as you're working to um, master a new language. Yep, and on more the general side, but certainly Quizlet can be used for learning a language as well. Quizlet is a really great way to create your own questions or create your own flashcards um, virtually. So putting it in the computer, not doing the typical, you know, pen to paper flashcards yeah. that Ashley and I are used to doing. But this is a great way that there's already sets that are pre-made, um, depending on kind of what class you're in or what kind of concept you're looking for. So you could definitely search for what other people have created to use as a study tool as well. But this is a great way for you to actually assess your own understanding as you're creating flashcards and as you're coming up with questions that you think are going to be on the exam, which are really two great study strategies that we talk about on a daily basis. Yeah, and we'll um, show you as we kind of get into about like scheduling and time management with Google Calendar. Again, as Annie said, it's on the go. So fitting in those five to 10 extra minutes of study time really does add up in the end and really is important um, in maximizing your time. So Quizlet is a great one for that. Yep, and just to put another plug in, we definitely recommend looking at material a little bit each day. So because Quizlet's on the go, like Ashley said, as you're sitting on the train or as you're sitting on the bus or as you have 10 minutes in between classes, this is something you can easily pull up and start reviewing even if it's just a short amount of time, really use that time wisely and think about how can I be effective, and Quizlet is a great way to kind of make that time more productive. We really love Quizlet. Here. We do, if you can't tell. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we wanted to do, we thought it'd be nice to do a little bit more interactive um, demonstration to show kind of like how we use apps um, on our own, um, how we work with students to use these. And again, we're always here for individual consultations. If you have questions and want to come in and talk about a specific, specific, specific sorry guys, academic strategy, um, please do so. For the first one is Google Calendar. So I actually have um, my Google Calendar up today. Um, so this is just a kind of a mock calendar. Um, everyone should have a Google Calendar that's connected to their Georgetown email account. Um, for some people, they really like um, paper calendars. That's fine if you can still take these uh, kind of lessons that we're going to talk about and transfer them into a written calendar. Um, but I like Google calendars because, as I said in the beginning, it can remind you of things. And as we are all very, very busy, it's really helpful to get those reminders. So the first thing that I've done um, is I went ahead and entered in all my classes for the semester. Um, my recommendation is at the beginning of the semester when you sign up for courses and you find out what days and times and where those classes are, put them into your calendar and make them reoccurring appointments. Um, so this is, I think, a pretty typical calendar of a student, pretty heavy 
classes um, on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. Wednesdays, it looks like you even have an evening class. Um, and it looks like here on a Monday, there's a 321 fit class at E8 that we have. Um, so this is really where we're kind of starting. And then we want to build in um, some other kind of academic strategies, appointments, and things that we want to work on throughout the week. Um, so one of my first tips is um, building in travel time. Um, I am a public transportation user, and I am think it takes 20 minutes to get everywhere, but really it takes 45 minutes on Metro, or an hour if they're super delayed. So one of the things that I've learned to do to make sure that I'm on time is if I know I need to be at a class at 9.30 on a Monday morning, and it takes me about an hour to get there, I'll build in my travel time from 8 to 9.30. And while it might only take me an hour, that extra half an hour gives me a little bit of a buffer if I'm running late. Um, but I also, if I happen to get there early, I can pull out my Quizlet app or I can pull out my notes and notability and review those. Um, so all I would do would say is travel time, or you could even do something as like leave the house now. and you just create it and it shows up on your calendar like that. So you can go through, maybe you have, um, you're on campus on Thursdays and you have uh, an internship Thursday afternoon at a local DC nonprofit and that starts at two o'clock and it goes till five. Um, so you can add in your internship here. Um, and one of the things that I really love about Google Calendars is that you can make events reoccurring. So if you're always going to have this internship on Thursdays from 2 to 5, you can hit an edit event. You're going to hit repeat. And you can repeat it every Thursday from now, and it can start on. You can have it where it never ends, never ends or you can hit a specific date. So maybe it goes till the end of the semester. So we'll say May 10th. You go ahead and hit done. Um, one last thing that I just want to point out is color coding. Um, color can, coding can kind of seem like a heavy task when like scheduling everything, but visually, if you're a visual learner like Annie or many of you, it's really helpful in just like visually quickly seeing something. So maybe we put our internship in green so that we know anything related to green on the calendar is related to our internship. You hit save, and there it goes, it pops up. Um, other things that you can add in um, that we really recommend that you do at the beginning of the semester when you get your syllabi, or even now, is go through and look at where all your assignments are. So what are your due dates for group projects, papers, um, when do you have exams? Um, and then put those into the calendar. So let's say we have an exam on Friday for our writing class. We're talking about grammar. So I would just create an all-day event, and when I would put midterm writing. I'm going to go ahead and hit edit event, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in red, because that's going to alert me to a deadline that's coming up. I'm going to go ahead and hit save. But one thing I do want to do is Instead of carving out a time from eight to nine, I want to put it as an all day activity so it will remind me the day before. And this is nice because it's in red, you can see it. So if say this is, we're on Monday, you know, February 19th, and I say, oh man, look, I've got a midterm coming up on Friday. This gives you the opportunity to say, okay, what am I going to do a little bit each day to prepare for that midterm? If we didn't have that input it on our calendar, you may end up getting to class and forgetting that you even had the midterm. Hopefully not. Um, or the other thing that we're trying to avoid is waiting until the night before to study for tests. So if you already have this post on your calendar, you have it, um, kind of a visual representation, a reminder, you can start to plan out your time more wisely. Yeah, so Annie makes a great point. This in red really kind of alerts me that I should be filling in some other spots on my calendar where I'm studying for this. And let me preface this by saying this is an example, and you should probably be studying for your midterms before the week before they're due. But we're going to use this one as an example. So if I have a midterm on Friday, my recommendation is to do a little bit of studying every day so it doesn't feel overwhelming. And we're going to go ahead and assume that you've been studying the week before. Um, so Monday, it looks like you're pretty booked in the morning until most of the afternoon. 
I would recommend um, around three o'clock, maybe from three to five, doing some studying for your midterm. The reason I don't do it right after this class is because you need a little bit of a brain break. You've just sat through three classes in a row, um, and so you need a little bit of a break. Go get some lunch, get something healthy, and then some studying before you maybe hit up your Yates Fitness class would be a great idea. So what you can do is, again, just drag it through three to five, I would put study, but I would specifically put what I'm studying for. So um, writing midterm, and you can hit create. And even a step further, so I really like this carving out the time. I'm a big proponent of then listing out specifically what you want to get done during that time period. But you might not list it here, or you might put it in like the description part of this calendar event. Or again, I'm a big proponent of to-do list and post-it notes. You can see if you saw my office right now, they were they were covered in it. Um, so really listing specifically and realistic goals. So what things am I going to get done during this time period? Am I reviewing notes? Am I creating an organizer? Am I following up with a classmate or a professor on a question? So being super realistic and specific with the things you want to get done will cut back on that procrastination because you already have a game plan for that time period. We hear from a lot of students that, okay, they've carved up time from three to five, but they spend half of it thinking about the things they have to get done or even organizing themselves to start studying. So if you already have a game plan, we're hopefully going to eliminate those factors. And one thing to take it even a step further, and I think Annie's point is so great that a lot of students spend so much time just thinking, getting organized when they should actually be studying. You should be doing that organization, making those to-do lists beforehand. But just as equally as that is, it's really important to consider the environment that you're studying in. Um, so one of my things that I speak with students about all the time is finding a dedicated space to study. Um, so you, there's a great where section. Um, most Google calendars are connected to um, uh, Google Maps, so the little things that will pop up. Um, actually, the Library of Congress is very quiet. <laughs> it's open to the public and a great place to study if you are at one of the downtown campuses. So maybe you like to you know, go to one of the museums, sit in the garden and study. Maybe it's a Starbucks. Maybe it's Lounger on main campus. Maybe it's um, a little hole in Lazy Center, but finding that space, and I recommend getting out of the bedroom, um, not studying in bed, finding a dedicated space where there's a calming environment, not a lot of noise, um, that you can kind of spread out and do your work is equally as important. So you've got your studying done, we've got our review list here, we've decided there's a little hole in the walls in Library of Congress where you can go study. You can go ahead and save that. And it's the best thing is it's on your calendar. Um, Google Calendar is automatically set up to remind you of appointments 15 minutes in advance. And so when things start getting tight as we fill in the rest of the week, you've already carved out that study time. My recommendation would be to continue to fill in study time throughout the rest of the uh, week. So Wednesday, Annie, it seems like a really busy day yeah. between 9.30 and 3.15 you have classes, and then you have a break, but you've got to get some dinner before your uh, sports management class in the evening. How would you recommend filling in study times on Wednesday? Yeah, so this is a, this is a great question. Um, you know what, like Ashley mentioned, that's a full class, or full day. So you've got four classes, kind of back to back, even though they are back to back, there is some wiggle room in between the classes that could be really good review. So even if it's not an hour, two hours of study time, maybe after calculus or maybe after your Arabic course, maybe you spend 10 minutes, 15 minutes just reviewing notes from that course, just to kind of give yourself a little time to um, let every all the information sink in from that class. This is not a heavy study time. We're not asking you to you know, really dive deep into the material, this is a good way to fill in gaps of your notes or pinpoint areas that you were like, oh, I didn't really hear what the professor said. Let me take a few minutes just to kind of make note of those things so that later in the day I can go back and ask the questions that I need to get more information. When it comes to really studying for that midterm, looks like we've got some time after our psych class, um, I would honestly recommend spending some personal time as well. So maybe you're going to grab some dinner with friends. Maybe it's 
dinner alone and just like trying to kind of recoup after a long busy day. We definitely recommend including your personal commitments on your calendar so that you do have that personal break when it comes time to kind of balancing a really busy course schedule. Yeah, definitely. Whatever it is that works for you to kind of de-stress. Um, I like to do yoga. I like to go for walks. I like to hang out with friends. So maybe on Fridays after that midterm, it's been a crazy week. You deserve some downtime. You can add in, maybe you're going to hang out with friends um, and you can add that into your calendar. So you making sure you're carving out that time. Um, other things to add to your calendar that I really love, um, ARC workshop. So um, if you know we are having a workshop on Tuesday um, from 12:30 to 1:30, you can add that in. Um, webinar. You can make it a reoccurring calendar. You can color code it as well. Um, things like uh, CAPS appointments, which are super important. Um, that that's a great resource that we have on campus. Um, so maybe you're feeling really stressed out going into that webinar. Maybe you can squeeze in a half an hour CAPS appointment um, on Wednesday in between classes. Um, things like that, doctor's appointments, um, even I put call mom down a lot of times. Um, just using your calendar to its fullest to make sure you're maximizing your time and again that you're accounting for everything that you have to do. Yep, and the nice thing too is we can access this calendar on our phone. So just going to the Google Calendar app on our phone, you can look on a weekly basis if you turn your phone sideways or just on a daily basis. What do I have going on this day? Okay, I see some chunks of time that I am free, quote unquote, um, don't necessarily have something. What can I do to maximize that time? And that's really the purpose of you know, utilizing the Google Calendar to the to the max. Great. Um, Great. So this is the Google Calendar. I think this is one of the easiest ones. We have a more in-depth webinar on this listed on our website. Um, but I recommend if you need a place to start with Calendar, I love the Google Calendar. It's connected to your Georgetown email. Start there. All right. So the next thing that we want to talk about. Um, is Evernote. Um, so Evernote is great because it's more than just kind of your notes um, and keeping storage things. Um, it's really interactive. So it's an app. You can download it on your phone or your iPad. Um, I have a Mac computer, so I can download it on my Mac. Um, you can sign up with your email account. See, I've got my email up here, my profile. Um, and the thing about Evernote that I've learned to use is the more you use it for things, the better it works. Um, it's a place where you can keep all your notes. You can separate things by notebook. So just for an example, here I have two notebooks. You can have as many as you want. Um, one is just on academic resources. Um, so here's a call map about meditation, which is really important if you're feeling stressed out. Um, we have a, a link to SMART goals from our website. Um, I've also included the academic webinar series in here from our website. Um, and then I found this awesome weekly calendar from Oregon State that you can use. So these are some great academic uh, resources we can use, and that's in one notebook. If I go back to my other notebook, I have a notebook called Notes. You, ideally, you could use this, set up a different notebook for each class, start a new note page um, for each time you lecture. If you want to start a new note page, you just click up here, new notes in notes. Um, what I have set up here is note taking strategies, which we've kind of touched on before. So here, maybe this is from um, listening notes from our webinar on um, note taking strategies, so why it's important to take notes. Um, and that studies show that people <laughs> forget 50% of a lecture within 24 hours, 80% within two weeks, 95% within one month if they don't take notes. Um, information on using instructors clues to take notes. Um, we have a great webinar on this as well if you want to learn some more. Um, but this is a kind of a great example. You can see here I've highlighted some stuff. Um, so you can really make this interactive. So you can highlight certain sections. You can make things bolder italics. It's just like a Word document. Um, so you can really, um, we talk about notes, interacting with the notes. You can still interact with the notes on this interface. Um, one of the things that uh, Annie mentioned earlier around uh, an app was the Cornell method. Um, so that's a, a note-taking strategy. Here we have just a note 
on what the Cornell method looks like. So essentially it's um, an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. You can fold it, the measurements don't have to be exact. But the idea is that you have one a cue column where you can kind of write notes or words to queue up and then more specifics in the note taking area. What I like about the Cornell method is this summary section here on the bottom where you summarize that day's notes. I think that is so important when you're in a class and you're taking notes to be able to summarize what happened, to have a few key takeaways, theories, follow-up steps um, with your notes. So this is the Cornell method that we spoke about earlier. Um, and one other one that we talked a little bit about was the mapping method. Um, so these are just two really quick examples, again, great for visual learners. Um, so for the mapping method, you can have a topic, a couple main ideas, the supporting ideas, and then the details great for kind of setting up a paper. Um, also great for studying. So this is um, just like a perceptions and there's three different types of it. This would be great on the back of a note card um, to visually see things. So this is um, kind of a basic function of just Evernote and being able to create notebooks um, and keep things organized. What I do love about Evernote that I will show you is it's very interactive. So I don't know if you can see here, but it's I'm using Chrome. There's, I think, a couple different extensions that you can download on the Evernote website. Um, but it's this little elephant button that you can click on as you're scrolling through web pages or maybe getting resources um, and being able to go back and forth and find things. Um, so I pulled up a couple of websites, um, the library website, because I was going to say, let's say that we're doing a research paper on time management. Um, so I went on to the library website on OneSearch, did an article search um, on time management, and pulled up a couple different articles that I think might be helpful for me in my research. When we're talking about research and research papers, um, and I would encourage you to speak with your librarian or the writing center or the writing lab, um, you want to do all your research at kind of one time, um, and then you're going to start going through and, you know, pulling out the details that are important to you. But the problem with research that I know I struggle with a lot is, well, where do I keep all this and how do I stay organized? Evernote is great for that. So if I found this article on college students' academic stress um, on time management, and I want to use this as part of my research paper, I would click on this Evernote icon, and this pop-up screen pops up. Um, so you can see it says click. You can do it as a PDF, a bookmark, or a screenshot, um, and then you can organize it away. Since I'm going to be reading the whole article, I'm going to keep it as a PDF. I'm going to create a new notebook for this. So maybe I'm going to say um, research. Hit the create a new notebook and hit create. Oops. All right, well, it should create it. All right, sorry guys, I was having some technical difficulties. There you go, okay. So we have a research notebook, um, it's saved as a PDF, and when I should go back to my Evernote and I should go back to my notebook, my research notebook is here. Um, it looks like it didn't save, um, but we'll have to go back and hit save again. There you go. All right, so see it shows up, um, and other related notes show up, and now when I go back, there it is. Um, so this is a great tool for when you're just doing um, research or if you're um, just even on websites or setting goals. Here's another one. You can do the same thing. Um, you can bookmark it, um, the page, and hit remember. Um, but again, I like PDFs. Um, and then just go ahead, click it again, hit save, and there you go. Um, so it's great. And again, with Evernote, the more you use it, um, the better it is. And you can see both of them are here. It's just a great way to really capture all information in one place, right? I always found that difficult of, I've got one notebook for this class and one notebook for this class. This is notes in it, but this also has printout articles. This is a great way to really just put everything all together so you know where it is. You can access it at any time. And I think this is just great. Yeah, it's really fantastic. 
Um, so the last one that we talked about um, is Headspace. And so this is a meditation app. Um, so Annie and I talk a lot about, as we've done today, breaks um, and the importance of, you know, managing stress mm -hmm. and being in check with your kind of inner self and what's going on with you. Um, and we know school is really stressful. Um, and we know that there's a lot going on and you look, saw that schedule and I'm sure a lot of you are like, mine's way worse. <laughs> um, so taking care of yourself is super important. Um, we have great resources on campus like TAPS. Um, we are here if you need to talk through academic strategies, but sometimes a five to 10 minute just like break um, to kind of clear out your mind is does wonders for kind of your outlook. Um, so Headspace is one that I use personally. Um, you can sign up, it's free. Um, they have different packs, which I like about it. Um, so they have just like some basic kind of meditation if you're new. Um, but what I really love is if you keep scrolling down, um, so they have work and performance um, and they have one on focus, but they have one specifically for students, which I think is fantastic. So there's one on leaving home. So maybe you're making a transition to a new school, a new state, a new country for the first time. This might be a great one for you to use. Um, I think the focus one is really fantastic. Um, so you can add it to your packs um, and they kind of go over the techniques what, that they're using um, and you can go ahead and start it. So um, you have it here. So down here on the bottom, this one is 10 minutes and it's one day, uh, day one of focus. And I think it's a total of 10 days if you hit begin. It should pop up. Well, this one is, looks like it's, I've used my free trials. <laughs> um, but you can use it for anything. Um, I think they're not actually that expensive, but I usually get about like six or seven free trials in it that you can use. Um, and then the basic one is always. So it's just a really good way to kind of maybe regain some center during stressful times, sleepless nights. Um, this is just a really great um, app that we can use um, to really kind of hit home the importance of being mindful of staying present and not letting the overwhelming coursework and reading and kind of just everything else going on kind of interrupt our kind of flow throughout the week. So I would definitely recommend incorporating this um, into your schedule. I think it's I think it's really helpful. Yeah, and so this one's just three minutes long um, and it's day one out of day 10 and it's an easy three minutes to do. Um, so that's Headspace. Again, you get a certain number free. I use it personally, so that's probably why I've used up all my um, free packs. All right, um, so now we're going to take any questions. If you have any questions, you can add them into the chat window um, and we'll be happy to answer them. We'll give you guys a couple of minutes. All right, so we have one question that came in, um, and a student said, I've tried to use apps before, but it really just didn't work for me. So the rec they're asking kind of what is our recommendation when trying to sift through all of the apps maybe that we talked about, or you can kind of research, or maybe professors talk about how do we actually make sure that the apps are working for us? Yeah, so I think it can be hard because there's a lot of apps out there, but I think things to consider is that you should Think about like your learning style and what your needs are. Um, and from there, um, kind of figuring out what would work. So if you're really struggling with time management or just like showing up to things on time, um, I would start with Google Calendar. <laughs> to me, that's the most basic. Um, if you're struggling with um, uh, like note taking, um, or maybe with research papers and kind of getting your thoughts organized, something like Coggle or Mind42 would be a great place to start. So I think about thinking about what your own needs are, what your classroom, um, you're studying, what kind of you need to get out of it. 
um, is really important. And again, if you're a visual learner, use something like uh, MindMap. If you're an auditory learner, use something like Notability where you can listen to your notes. So thinking about what your needs are and what um, you want to get out of it. Yeah, we definitely don't recommend downloading every single app and trying everything right off the bat and brand new. So definitely try one or two um, and really implement it on a consistent basis. We talk a lot about habit forming and habits form over a 21 day period. So you can't use a strategy or a tip or an app once and say, hey, that didn't work for me. Start to implement it on a consistent basis and then you'll be able to determine whether it's something that you is gonna benefit you or it's something that really just doesn't kind of jive with your learning style um, and with everything else. Great, and we have one more question and it says, can Evernote and other apps be integrated with other platforms like Google Classroom or Canvas? Um, so in the case of Evernote, I think as long as you have the Google Chrome extension, um, you should be okay. Um, that like you should be able to kind of screenshot anything and add it in. So it should work with Google. It should work with like Google Notebooks or Canvas because you're just using the Chrome platform. Um, other apps, I don't know about kind of their integration with Canvas, but um, sometimes they, I mean, read kind of the details of it, but Evernote should, as long as you're using that Google Chrome extension, and it is free, you don't have to pay anything with that for Evernote. Okay, um, if that's it for questions, um, we have a webinar feedback form, it's tinyurl.com slash backslash ARC webinar feedback. Um, you can give us some feedback about this webinar, suggestions for upcoming webinars. Um, and as always, please join us for our next webinar series, which I believe is on the 21st um, at noon. Yes, the 21st at noon, and that's going to be on classroom engagement. Um, and as always, if you have more kind of specific questions to your own kind of learning strategy and learning process, um, you can be in contact with Annie um, at ARC at georgetown.edu or myself, um, Ashley, and I work at the School of Continuing Studies at ARC-SES at georgetown.edu. Um, thanks so much for joining us, you guys, and we hope to see you back here in two weeks. Thanks, everyone. Bye.